Matthew chapter number 18. I was, uh, as I was preparing for this, I told my father-in-law that I was going to be speaking tonight, and he said, you want some advice? And that's always scary, you know, and someone wants to give you advice. I said, sure. He said, well, I had a professor in college, and he was a pastor, and he said, the key to a good message is there's a beginning, there's an end, and the two are close together. So... We'll see how we do here. Um, Matthew chapter 18, we'll read verses uh, 1 through 4. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child... The same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And, you know, we, we, we see that in these kids that, that were here, that were speaking to us tonight, that childlike faith, that, that humbleness, that ability to realize that they don't know everything about life, and that's okay. All they need to know is what the Lord's done for them. And their ability to share that is great. And, you know, I think part of what I, from what I understand from Aaron and, and some of the messages, a lot of it was that even though you are children, that's not a hindrance to you. That's not, you know, and, and oftentimes it can be difficult for kids to um, understand what their, what their purpose is and, and what their goal should be and, and what they should be doing, especially in the church when, you know, you have all the adults running things. And oftentimes we overlook uh, the contribution uh, of, of our children. And that's one thing that I've always, I've always told my boys specifically, you know, always keep that tenderness, keep that ability um, to, to not be hardened by this world. You know, I said, you know, as you get older, your life experiences will, will, will change the way you look at things sometimes. And, and you need to try to avoid that as much as possible. Keep that tender heart, uh, keep that humbleness about you. Uh, you know, as adults, it, like I said, it, it's easy to get hardened by life and, and to um, lose that tenderness to God's Word and to the Holy Spirit as He prods you and pushes you in, in the things that you would do. Um, I used to work for a flooring company, an installation, flooring installation company, and, you know, I, I, I was more of an office guy, so I didn't go out in the field all the time, but when I did... You know, the first day or so was horrible. You know, my hands hurt, my knees hurt, my legs hurt, I couldn't do anything. But as I got into it more, you know, my hands became more used to it. I would get some, you know, calluses. And, and that can be good when you're talking about physical labor. Uh, but when you're talking about matters of the heart, being calloused and, and being hardened is not a good thing. So tonight I want to give uh, four warning signs for us, four things that we need to uh, look out for. Uh, as we do our work in the Lord, as we try to accomplish what he has given us, each and every one of us, to do on an individual basis. You know, the spiritual hardening happens, you know, when we, when we become overconfident. Uh, when, when we get too confident in our, in, in ourself, when we become self-sufficient, when we think that, you know, we don't really need the Lord. And, and it's not always a conscious thing. As a matter of fact, for most Christians, it's not a conscious thing. It's not like you're saying, okay... I don't need the Lord. You're just getting caught up in those day-to-day -day things. And, and, and it's easy to forget uh, that, that you need to rely on the Lord. So the first thing is disobedience. It's the first warning sign, disobedience. Let's flip over to Exodus chapter And we'll read verse number two. Obviously, a very familiar passage to us. Uh, we know what's going on in Exodus. Moses is, is coming into the Pharaoh, uh, Moses and Aaron, and they're telling Pharaoh their message from God. And here's Pharaoh's response in Exodus chapter five, verse number two. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. So Pharaoh was out and out disobeying the Lord. Now this is an unsaved person who truly didn't know the Lord. He didn't know what the Lord was capable of that, uh, at that point. And as we all know, he became very aware of what the Lord was capable of over the uh, next coming events. Um, but for us, that's not true. We, we all know the Lord here tonight. And, and whether or not we are saved or not, if we've accepted him into our heart, which I hope that everybody has, and if you haven't, 
Certainly talk to somebody after the service. It's the most important thing uh, that, that anybody can do in their life and needs to do. Um, but we all know the Lord. We know the power of the Lord. And there are often times where we know his commandments to us. The Bible is very clear on many of the things that we are to do in our life. And when we disobey those things, when we don't do what the Lord has given to us, specifically in his word of God, come a little bit harder in our heart each and every time. The more you disobey, the easier it is to disobey. You build up those calluses in your life and you build up those things where it stops affecting your heart like it should as a Christian who's right with the Lord. So we need to be very careful about that. Um, we need to, you know, the Lord might, the Holy Spirit might be working in our lives that we need to get involved in certain ministries. You know, we have a lot of ministries around this church uh, that need work, that needs work done. Uh, so maybe the Lord's telling you that. Maybe the Lord is, uh, you know, putting on your heart somebody that you need to apologize to. Something that's happened that you've let go and you've let go and, and it's causing you anger and it's eaten your heart with bitterness. Maybe the Lord's telling you that you need to go to that person and apologize. Whatever that is, we need to be obedient to the Lord. The first warning sign of getting a hardened heart is the disobedience and the willingness to continue to disobey. The further we turn, the easier it is to stay away. The second thing is taking God's blessings for granted. So we have the disobedience first. Secondly, taking God's blessings for granted. Let's turn to Deuteronomy. Just a couple books over. Verse number, or chapter number eight. Deuteronomy 8, and we will read verses 6 through 14. Deuteronomy 8, 6 through 14. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, and land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God of the good land which he hath given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I commanded thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Now here, you know, in this portion, the, the children of Israel has, have come, come out of slavery. They've come out of Egypt. They are in the land flowing with milk and honey. They have everything they need. They're going to, you know, live this good life. And as we read those, that, that passage there, it's much the same that, that we live today. Uh, we have everything that we could possibly want. We have uh, blessings that, you know, people, um, you know, just 15, 20 years ago wouldn't imagine. You know, in our, in our hands, in our pockets, on our phones, we have more information than President Clinton had when he was in the White House. Uh, we have everything that we could possibly want and need. And as we attain wealth, as we attain knowledge, as we get the, receive these blessings from God, it's, it's easy to start getting, feeling like, well, I'm entitled to that. I deserve that. I'm an American. I'm a Christian. I am a good person. I do this. I do that. And, and the longer that we ignore those blessings as blessings the easier it is, once again, to stay in that routine. And it's important for us to stop and to realize that all of this stuff that we have, all of these things that we have, are blessings from the Lord. They are things that he has given to us, whether we deserve it or not. <laughs> you know, the Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. Uh, we all are a recipient of the blessings from the Lord. And we need to realize that they are from the Lord. Um, 
you know, it, it's easy to be, have that entitled, you know, read, read your own press clippings, you know, it happens a lot to talented people, you know, and sports and um, artists and stuff like that, where, where they see, they, they hear about how great they are, you know, just so you see it, you know, whether or not they can, it's throwing a football or catching a uh, baseball or shooting a basketball, they, they, and you see it all the time in, in, in these extra talented people, and they think, okay, well now I have all this natural ability, I don't really need to work at it, it's just going to continue to come to me, I'm, I'm you know, and they, they become that entitled person and then oftentimes many times most of the times their career is cut short because they don't put in the work and so we need to make sure as Christians that even though we are receiving these blessings we, we do have the wealth of knowledge at our fingertips we do have wealth of um, you know the wealth of money and, and food and housing and everything uh, that a lot of people in other countries would love to have, a lot of people in, in past times would love to have, we have all that. We need to realize that these are blessings from God, and we need to realize, acknowledge that to the Lord and not let those things entitle us and help and, and send us down the road of a hardened heart. And, and that's one of the toughest ones. I know that I have been guilty of it in the past, and, and I know that it, it is tough. But we need to continue to remain humble, um, not get complacent in those things. You know, one of the blessings, and it mentions, you know, a few verses up, and I think it was in verse 4, the Israelites were 40 years wandering around in the wilderness, and their clothes didn't fall apart. I mean, you know, I, a lot of times I'm lucky to have a shirt for a few months before it gets a hole in it, you know. And these Israelites, they, they didn't, the raiment, let's read verse 4 real quick because now I'm interested. Thy raiment wax not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell for four, these 40 years. Has anybody walked for, I don't know, a few hours and your feet hurt and are swollen? I mean, these are blessings from the Lord. We need to acknowledge those. Look for those things and not take those things for granted. Keep that tender heart towards the Lord and the things that he gives to us. So we got the first one was disobedience. The second one, taking God's, blessing, taking God's blessings uh, for granted. And then the third thing uh, is blaming God, you know, actually blaming God for some things. And let's turn over to Psalm chapter number 95. Psalms chapter number 95. And we will read verse number 7 and 8. Psalms 95, 7 and 8. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. So this word provocation here, talking about strife, contention, um, you know, the temptation in the wilderness, the tests that the Israelites were up against. In our lives, we come against these tests. We have these provocations. We have strifes. We have contentions. Uh, whether it's issues, you know, between each other, um, whether it's issues with our health, um, we we come across these things. Health of our loved ones, uh, and it's easy to start getting a little bitter towards the Lord in a lot of those situations. Um, it, it's easy, and, it, and, it's, and it's not something that happens overnight. It's a gradual thing, and it just seems to constantly you know, weigh you down more and more, and it just keeps piling on, and you keep having these strifes, which, as we talked about before, um, whether or not we know it or not, they're coming to God for, from, from God for a reason. So uh, we should be, you know, it, it's how we view these things. Um, can we, should we view them as a blessing? Do we view them as a way that it can make us stronger, can help us be a better Christian? Or are we viewing these things as things that the Lord's just piling on? You, you, you get to the point after a while where, where, where it's easy to start thinking, okay, well, the Lord can't ta won't take care of this. The Lord's not going to do this for me. Or the Lord can't do this for me. And it's a slippery slope. And that's why we need to constantly be on guard for these kind of things. Uh, we need to constantly be aware that blaming the Lord for things that happens in our lives isn't the right way to go. We need to, <clears throat> um, we need to, we need to 
be what the Lord wants us to be. We need to acknowledge these things as what they are in our lives. And sometimes it's hard to know. And that's the toughest thing. You know, why did this happen to me? We might never know. But we do know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. And we do have a promise from the Lord that no matter what happens in our life, what happens to the th people around us and the strifes that occur uh, seemingly on a minute-by-minute, day-by-day -day basis, they are there for a reason and they will make us better. Even if we don't know it, even if we can't, we never see the purpose of it. We might never see the good that comes out of it. But the Lord does, and he does have it in his hands. And this, you know, all of these go back, especially this one, to our first point in disobedience. Um, as we continue down this road and we acknowledge this strife as a negative thing in our life, we, they all play together. Then we become more disobedient, and then we go further down that rabbit hole. And like I said, it, it is a very slippery slope for us. It doesn't take long to let one little thing enter in your life and take you down that road where your heart becomes hardened. We need to make sure that we are guarding our hearts, that, that they're not hardened. And then the last thing, uh, the fourth point, is rejecting correction. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter number 29. Proverbs chapter number 29. And we will read verse number 1. Proverbs 29, 1. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. <clears throat> so, once again, all of these kind of you know, are very closely connected, but the Lord corrects us. The Holy Spirit corrects us. And there are storms in our life that are storms of correction. There are things that the Lord sends our way that reveals to us things in our life that we need to change, reveals to us things in our life that we need to do better, um, that reveals in our lives things that we need to stop doing altogether, things that we need to avoid. And the Lord does these, but unfortunately it doesn't come with a countdown timer. It says, okay, here's number, you got ten left. All right, here, nope, now you got nine left. We don't know. And, and so it's important for us constantly to be on guard for that. Because the more we reject the correction of the Lord, the harder our necks get, the harder our hearts get, and the easier it is to stay away from the Lord. We need to make sure that we are not going down that road um, of disobedience, taking God for granted, blaming God, and, and rejecting his correction, rejecting his leading in our life. So how do we avoid the hardening of the heart? Well, going back to the very beginning, we need to have childlike faith. You know, and we have the, in that in that verse, there's quite a contrast there between the disciples and the kids. You got the disciples, the kids who are probably just hanging out, listening to Jesus, being entertained, having a good time, having a pure heart and what's going on. And you got the disciples over there and, and, and the, the, the Bible doesn't specifically, you know, say this, but this is kind of how the way I like to imagine it. They're all sitting around going, so who do you think's the greatest? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it might be us, you know, and they're kind of having this discussion, you know, you can see that, that their heart might not be in the right place, that they're asking the Lord, who's the greatest in heaven? Because it's one of those things that does it really matter. If we're all going about the Lord's business, there, there's no degree there. We, we need to be doing with the Lord. So you have those two things. So we need to have that childlike faith. We need to have the faith of a child, the humbleness of a child that's willing to stand up and say what they feel about what the Lord's been doing in their heart. That they're willing to go out and to teach their friends and to tell others about God. Um, you know, sometimes I wish Brady had a little more shyness. But <laughs> I, I, tell, I tell my boys all the time, keep that tenderness, keep that, that soft heart. Um, so you want to, we need to be humble. And secondly, we need to respond to the leading of the Holy Spirit, respond to the leading of the Word of God, respond to these things that we know that the Lord has given to us. 
And we might try to ignore it, and we might try to stay busy in our lives. We might try to constantly keep the TV on or the radio on or reading a book or listening to our headphones, constantly having some sort of input so that we don't have to be still, so that we don't have to listen to what the Lord's saying to us. We need to be careful about that thing, about those things. We need to be ready to respond to the Lord's calling, whether it's, you know, obviously first and foremost in salvation and then in our ministry here in the church and taking care of different programs and being a part of spreading the word of God. We need to be responsive to his call when, when he calls. And then the key to any good relationship, communication. I mean, we need to be in constant communication with the Lord. We have a lot of different ways that we can communicate with the Lord. I mean, first and foremost, obviously prayer. The Bible is very clear about praying without ceasing. And, you know, I always give this example, you know, in, in children's church and stuff, and I close my eyes and run into stuff. And obviously we know that the Lord's not, you know, talking about that. But being in that presence of mind where we are always willing to take what we have to the Lord and to pray to him and to have a right heart and being tender to those things by reading our Bible, by coming to church, by fellowshipping with each other. These are all things that we can do that we need to be doing in order to keep a soft heart and to be responsive to the Word of God and to the Holy Spirit's leading in our lives. So we'd like to have the musicians come and we'll have our invitation. I'll say a word of prayer while they make their way forward. Dear Father, Lord, I thank you for this time that you've given to us. Thank you for the children that uh, went to camp and, and got to experience this good time, Lord. Um, thank you for the counselors that gave their time. Thank you for the church and all of the members that um, donated financially and donated their time and their prayers to, to be in prayer for the kids. Lord, thank you for the good time that they had. Thank you for the message uh, that you gave me tonight, Lord. And just pray that if there is anyone here that, that is having an issue with, with a hardening heart, that they would be open and receptive to your word, that they would make the decisions in their life that they need to make, Lord. And we ask all these things in your name.